been in every one so far, and the guy trying to stop him will be our number one seed from Londonderry, New Hampshire, Tim Lipke. Tim comes in with an average of 131, a roll-off score of 654 to give himself the number one seed, and this will be his 13th appearance here in singles competition here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Lots of money at stake, $500 to the runner-up today, $1,000 to the winner. The winner, of course, also moves in to the Tournament of Champions as well to become our fifth qualifier. We also have our bonus ball contest coming up at the end of the hour. That'll be worth $80 and perhaps a brand new set of bowling balls for you, but only if we have your postcard in our big barrel. If you haven't sent one in, we'll tell you how to do that a little bit later on. We're about to get started. Our three-game match for the series championship, Tim Lipke and Paul Berger will get started after these messages. Don't go away. Well, if you've missed any of the action in this series, our number five seed, Kevin Davis, dominated the first couple of weeks. He threw a 429 three weeks ago to beat Rich Hallberg to kick off this series. Then he knocked off Dan LaPlume, but Kevin uh, was not able to knock off Paul Berger last week. Paul with the 409 to beat him, and so now we're left with our top two seeds here to decide it. The uh, spot in the Tournament of Champions, of course, Paul Berger has been in all seven of them so far, and he's trying to make it a perfect eight for eight. But he will have to beat Tim Lippy in order to get there. Nine pin drop to start it. And the spare. So just like that, Paul Berger is on the board. Paul now with an overall record in singles competition here of 17 and eight. three on his spare. And a six box. So losing the effect of the spare, just 19 in the opening two. And that brings up Tim Lipke. Tim hasn't been with us here in, in singles competition for almost two years, and the last time he was here, it was a memorable match back in March of 1994. Tim threw a 423 that day and lost by two pins to Jack Quinn with a 425. Jack Quinn that day threw a 179 game. Tim actually had a big lead after the first game, and then that 179 game put, uh, put Jack right back in it. Nine for Tim. Tim looking to uh, get into the Tournament of Champions for the second time. He appeared in the tournament back in 1991. Nothing there. And the eight. And Paul way off to the left on that one. Almost everything but the 10 pin. Covers it for the 10 box. Remember, the winning score today is what helps determine the seedings for the Tournament of Champions. A little early to worry about that, but something to keep in mind throughout the hour. The uh, number one qualifier right now, Bob Kelly with a 410. Joe Ashline at 406. They're the only two over 400. And another 10 for Paul Berger. 
Tim for the 5, 9, and 10, not quite. Almost. Tim still looking for that first mark. And he'll have a shot at it here, the two, four, and seven. With wood between the four and seven. And there it is for the spare, his first. So Tim gets on the board, one mark each, and another look. Next Sunday, we shift to our annual mixed doubles tournament here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. That'll be for the next four Sundays. And then uh, after that, we go into our final regular season series of qualifying for the Tournament of Champions. Because after today, we'll only need one more bowler for the tournament field. And as we get a little closer, we'll give you the dates for the Tournament of Champions, as well as for the New Hampshire State Candlepin Championships, which will be held over on our Saturday show later on in the spring. Paul thought he might have had the spare there, but the nine pin remains. And it's still there. Let's see what happened. Cut the two pin, but a little too much in front of the nine. many candle pin games on record higher than Tim Lipke's high single of 215. Just a handful. The 4, 7, and 10 with wood. Several different opportunities or options to play this one. Tim goes with the forwardmost piece of wood, but nothing gets over to the corner. Ten box and Tim has a six pin lead through five boxes. And the strike. A little delayed strike, but it counts just the same. Looked like a diamond at first, then the five pin, no. Paul Berger. Seven for Paul. During that uh, mixed double series next Sunday, Dan Murphy will return, but I want to Take a second to thank once again Tanya Murphy for filling in on the computer scoreboard here during this series, helping us out, doing a great job. And maybe we'll give Dan his job back next week. We're thinking about it still. Paul trying to cut the five pin over into the four and the seven. Paul with just that one mark in the first. 
been open since then. Chance for Tim Lipke now to add to the lead, working on a strike. Good ball. Great looking ball and could easily have been a double strike. Leaves the five pin. Missing to the left. Speaking of the five pin, it was a five pin that cost Tim Lipke that match two years ago against Jack Quinn. He was reminiscing a little bit about it before the show today. And he had a five pin with a piece of wood in front of it for a spare that could have won the match for him and he just missed everything in the last box. And looking for a break here. Remains to be seen if that's a break. The six pin goes down, leaving the five, nine, and ten. Could have played the wood, perhaps, but he goes right at the five pin and takes the spare. Fine shot for Tim Lipke. I wondered if he would play that piece of wood out in front, but he went right at the five pin and threw it all into the corner. Paul Berger trying to get back to work here. Nine pin drop for him. No. A rare miss on a single for Paul Berger. He'll have to settle for a 10. Candlepin Stars and Strikes is brought to you in part by Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. Come to Salem and save. Emmett Horgan and the crew at Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan right there on Main Street, Route 97 in Salem, New Hampshire. And Paul cannot convert the triangle. And he will have a 94 opening game. Very rare under 100 game for Paul Berger. So Tim Lipke will have the lead at the end of one. Working on a spare here. And he puts nine on it. Another spare. Just five on this one. That last spare was Tim's first over on lane 32. What about this shot? Yes, sir. Three in a row. Spare in the tenth. A beauty. 127 plus a ball. Tim's going to have a big lead. Seven more for a 134 and a 40 pin lead for Tim Lipke at the end of one. Still plenty of time for Paul Berger, though. Game two of this series championship when we come back. Still looking for our second winner of the year in the bonus ball contest. We'll uh, draw your postcard, perhaps, if we have it in the drum here. But uh, if not, what are you waiting for? Regular size postcards only. Include your name, your full address, the number from 1 to 10. That's the number of pins you think will drop on the bonus ball at the end of the hour. And be sure and mail it in to Park Place Lanes, Route 28, Wyndham, New Hampshire, 03087. If your number matches the uh, pin drop number, you win the jackpot and a brand new set of bowling balls from Paramount Industries. Tim Lipke.
Wow, had a piece of wood flying through, but the two, five, and eight are still there along with the 10 pin. Nine box for Tim. off target. Oh. Wow, looked pretty good on the way down. And now he's going to have to battle just to get an eight box. And that's what he has. Although he almost had more. Quick reminder, while I may here on Stars and Strikes, that uh, you know when the crew is hungry here at Park Place Lanes, there's only one place they even think about going. And that's the Willow Tree North Restaurant, located right here inside Park Place Lanes. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, great food, great service, great prices. Rodney Cronin and the gang will take care of you at the Willow Tree North Restaurant located right inside Park Place Lanes. Paul Berger trying to make up a 40-pin deficit. 41 now. He had only one mark, and that was in the first box of the match. He's now gone 10 boxes without marking, but has a possibility here on the 1, 2, and 9. Let's see. No, right through the head pin. Maybe it was there on the sweep. in the third, his first mark of game two, his second strike of the match. Half Worcester. Get a seven on the strike. And a nine box. So Paul Berger with some work to do here now. Certainly have seen uh, enough of Paul Berger over the years to know that he can get very hot. But he has not been able to put anything together so far today. And now a spread eagle. Nine box for Paul, and that takes us to a break almost at the halfway point. Tim Lipke in command at this point. Still a long way to go in our championship match. Tim Lipke and Paul Berger back in a minute. You look at Tim Lipke, who is uh, 
comfortably in the lead, at least for the moment. Leading by 46, and there is a strike. Second time in a row he's thrown a strike on lane 32 here at Park Place. And both of them were powerful strikes, quick ones. But through the center, had a half Worcester last time on the first ball and bailed out with a seven. Let's see what he can do here. He could easily have had a spread eagle there. Well, he may have a spare leave. He goes far enough to the right on this wood. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Swept it right across for the spare. That was a big break. That could easily have been a spread eagle on that first ball. Instead, it's another mark. And Paul Berger must get started soon. Not this time. That's now 14 straight boxes without a mark for Paul Berger. Unheard of. Looks like he's perhaps coming up a little short on his delivery. You see him rubbing his hands. It looked like he dropped that ball. Can't seem to get comfortable. And a nine box. So Tim Lipke will step up now to further add to the lead. big thing for Tim right now is to just forget about the score almost and just kind of continue his business and he does strike on spare that's now three strikes in a row on lane 32 and he put a spare in between the last two so three marks in a row now big eight pin drop this time the wood is all going toward the 10 pin, but he's also got the four. <laughs> Tim wants some of it to just move out a bit, and it's helping. Cooperating a little bit, at least giving him a target. Will it work? No. But Tim's lead is now 67. Paul Berger will have a spare lead here. The three, six, and ten. And gets it. No change of expression from Paul. <laughs> Although you know he's got to be feeling a little frustrated. It's his second mark of the day. And wouldn't you know, punching right through on the fill, just four. Oh, great shot. That's a great 10 box right there. Unfortunately for Paul, it isn't a mark, but worth another look. Great shot. The three, four, nine, and the seven in the corner, the last to go. Well, <laughs> Tim almost threw himself another strike on lane 32. But he leaves the 10 pin this time. Right on it for the spare. That is mark number 10 for Tim Lipke. He is just turning in a very workmanlike performance right now. 
Had five marks in the first game, five now here in the second. He's had four strikes already. Now a spread eagle, though, on that fill. Still, though, Tim will be in the 130s, above his average for this second game. Probably up around 270 somewhere. Eight, 134, matching his first game score, 268 for Tim Lipke. And Paul can't get the backdoor spare. Missed the object pin. The head pin is still there. For the 10. Big ball there, and look at the result. Wow. Boy, that looked like a possible strike ball. Instead, it's the four and the 10. And even with the wood, it won't be easy. Oh, he got it, though. Good shot. There's something positive, perhaps, for Paul to build on here in the 10th. And he will fill it with six for a 106 and an even 200 after two. So a big lead for Tim Lipke, but one game to go here to decide the big money on Candlepin, Stars and Strikes. Come right back. Well, lots on the line here uh, this week on Stars and Strikes. As we've been saying, 500 to the runner-up, $1,000 to the winner, and the winner also gets into the field for the 1996 Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions, the eighth annual event. Bob Kelly with a 410, the number one seed as of right now. Joe Ashline with a 406. Rich Clark in the number three spot for now at 396. And Dan Broder also in the field at 362. There are two spots open, and one of those two spots will be decided in the next 15 minutes or so here on Stars and Strikes. Paul Berger, our number two seed but really struggling here today. Just 200 through two games and trailing by 68 pins and not the ball he wanted to throw to start game three. But almost converting it for the spare. Well, I dare say with uh, Tim Lipke already at 268, probably Dan Broder will slip down to fifth. The next checkpoint would be uh, Rich Clark at 396. And uh, if Tim were to hold on and win, he would need 129 to beat Rich Clark. And then beyond that, the two 400s, and uh, it'd have to be a big game by someone in order to get there. Although not real big and certainly not out of the range. For either one of these guys. As you've noticed, if you've been watching the statistics uh, up on your screen through the show, both of these guys have thrown 200 singles, and both of these guys have thrown 500 triples, and there aren't many people who've done either one of those things. fires on the possible spare. So Tim's got really two jobs here in this third game. He's got the big lead, so he wants to concentrate on that, but also concentrate on the fact that he's got to keep bowling, forget about the big lead, and try and get as big a score as he can so that he can improve his position toward the Tournament of Champions if, in fact, he does get there. And I would say that if he 
throws a good enough score, it won't really matter what Paul Berger does. Paul's going to need a huge game in order to uh, come back and win this thing. Tim for the spare, the one, two, and nine is 11th spare of the day. The piece of wood in the back kept the ball in play, but it was the head pin that went down and got the nine. And Paul Berger almost with the strike. He has not thrown a strike today. He had five of them a week ago against Kevin Davis. But he'll take the spare right now and hope to build on that. Another nine pin drop. Maybe all of them. Nope. The five pin will stay up. And another spare. Paul will keep battling. The kind of bowler he is, he is uh, not going to go quietly. The first time today he's put marks back to back. To get a little something started. Tim Lipke on a spare now. And he will take seven. Ooh, snapped a piece of wood over in front of the 10 pin, but <laughs> I think even Tim is amazed that he didn't get it. See how that wood uh, flew across there right in front of the 10 pin. A little bit on the Brooklyn side, and Tim will shoot at the three, four, six, and seven. Almost. Nine box for Tim. Paul Berger will be working on a spare and trying to cut into this lead for Tim Lipke. When we come back, championship match here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Well, Paul Berger has two marks in a row. And he throws a good looking first ball there and we'll end up with the seven and 10. With wood that's still moving. That wood may roll off. No, it stays in front of the seven pin. It'll just depend on where the wood winds up whether Paul will have a legitimate shot at this or not gives it a try and almost wow that kind of day Paul's had to work for everything nothing coming easy on this day he did all he could do not the touch on that other piece of wood but just coming up short And another two pin leave that's not easy. This time the two and the eight. Boy, oh boy. First balls in both of those boxes that could easily have been strikes if not at least makeable spare leaves and neither one of them was a makeable spare leave. Not a legitimate one anyway.
Tim Lipke. No, couldn't carry the nine in the back. His lead is 60. Right now, Tim is at 324. I'm thinking about the overall score. Oh, big first ball there. The five pin stays up. <laughs> Tim wants that front piece of wood out of the way. It's moving more in front of the five pin. Blocking his view, the other piece wouldn't bother him if that front piece would get out of the way. And that's, whoa, how about that? Sure, play it off the wood and have the ball come back. Why not? <laughs> the crowd gets a big kick out of that. The ball comes back and just touches the five pin. And a spare for Paul Berger in the seventh. Mark number six for Paul. Brooklyn hit, he'll take seven, and that piece of wood may be out of play. Cindy Sisson will check it. And while she does, I'll remind you that next weekend, here on the Winds of New England, Saturday at noon, another edition of Candlepin Skins. And then next Sunday at noon, we will begin our annual mixed doubles tournament here at Park Place Lanes in Wyndham. Five teams, mixed doubles teams, will battle for prize money and we always have a lot of fun watching the teams compete. So we hope you'll be with us next Sunday at noon here on Stars and Strikes for Mixed Doubles. An eight box for Paul. And I think it's safe to say that uh, Tim Lipke will have an eye on the scoreboard here the rest of the way. Thinking about that final total right now. Working on a spare. Takes six. And let's see. Not enough to take the 10 pin. Well, there's no doubt, as I mentioned earlier, that. Uh, Tim's score will pass Dan Broder. The, uh, the next checkpoint is Rich Clark at 396. And in order to beat that 396, Tim Lipke would need a 129 in this game. So you can see that he's got to have uh, probably three marks here in order to pass Rich. Interesting thing is, Rich is in the crowd today. Doing a little Tournament of Champions scouting, perhaps. Nine drop for Tim. Well, there's one of those marks. We'll see what happens in the end now. Tim has won the match. It's just now a question of what his qualifying score will be. Paul just was never really able to get going today. You go back to the very first box of the match. He had a spare in the first box, but just a three fill on it. Then he went 15 boxes without marking, and he still, to this point, only has only six marks today. And even with all that wood in front, nothing happening. So 
So Paul will leave the stage open for Tim Lipke, a 115 for Paul Berger, a 315 three game total. And a fine round of applause for Paul, who's been uh, a winner many more times than not here on Stars and Strikes. Now the focus turns to Tim Lipke and his final score. And there's a big fill on that first spare. It'll be a nine. Remember, one 29 is the score that Tim needs, so he could do it with just one more mark. If he gets a big fill, there is a spare in the ninth. If Tim gets at least an eight on this spare, he can pass Rich Clark without another mark. And he gets eight. Not only that, but a spare leave. So even if he just gets these two pins in two shots, he will uh, pass Rich Clark. There's the spare in the 10th. Well, now an interesting situation at 129. If uh, Tim were to throw a strike here, he would pass Joe Ashline by one. He has 397 right at the moment. 406 is Joe Ashline. So a nine on this spare would tie Joe, and then we would go to the tiebreaker, which would be high single in the championship matches. A strike would give Tim the second seeded spot right now. Let's see. And let's see about it. It'll be eight. An eight fill, 137 for Tim Lipke and a 405, putting him one pin behind Joe Ashline and right now seated third in the Tournament of Champions. We'll check that all out for you and chat with the bowlers, have our bonus ball contest too when we come back to Park Place Lanes after these messages. And welcome back to Park Place Lanes, Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Uh, let's bring up our runner-up today, a $500 check awaiting for Paul Berger, who had the big 400 triple last week, but uh, this week not to be, I'm afraid. And uh, I guess the less said about that uh, score, the better, Paul. But uh, obviously you've uh, had a lot more wins on here than losses. But uh, going against him, you knew it would take a big score, and it just wasn't to be today, I guess. Well, certainly not going against him. I, I knew I'd need a, a big number. and. Uh... Years and years ago, a gentleman by the name of Pete Iannuzzo told me, you're going to bowl this game, you got to take the good with the bad. I don't know how bad it has to get, but, but uh, hey, you know, it's, it's one of those things. Uh, I certainly can't look back at one shot, that's for sure. Right. Well, I hope, uh, I hope you get uh, at least an opportunity to perhaps make another chance. And I know a lot of people would like to see you continue your streak of appearances in the Tournament of Champions. You have one shot left. So uh, after we do mixed doubles, we'll see. I'll try. All right. Thanks very much, Paul. Congratulations. Paul Berger, a great champion here on Stars and Strikes. And now Tim Lipke. Before we chat with Tim, we'll have him do the honors, our bonus ball contest. $80 on the line here. Tim's already won 1000 today. Now he's going to try and win some for somebody else. And it will be a seven. So let's check it out here before we talk with Mr. Lipke. We'll reach way down in here and see if we can't find a match somewhere. Not a match. The guess was nine for Roland Pelletier of Manchester, New Hampshire. So Roland will be sending you a consolation prize. We'll go up to $90 next week. Step right in here, sir. We have a, a little check for you, a $1,000 check, in fact, and also a word that you will be with us in the spring for the Tournament of Champions, first time since 1991. Congratulations. It's been a while. It's nice <laughs> to be back, to be honest with you, very much. So my well, wife will appreciate this, too. Well, I know that you had to be thinking also, facing Paul Berger, he's got that long streak of appearances in the Tournament of Champions. You figure, oh, boy. This is going to be tough. I've known Paul for a number of years, and it's so unlike him to have a day like this. I figured when I walked in, knew who I had to face. It was going to be like 420 to 415 or something because he's <clears throat> such a great bowler and such a credit 
but uh, there's another finals left, and I got a feeling that <laughs> I'll still be meeting him in the Tournament of Champions, so I hope so anyway. Were you aware of the uh, of the seating and your total score there going into the last couple of boxes, what you needed to do? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying for every possible pin because of the 410 really for Park Place Lanes is not that high a right, score. Right, right. And to be 410, 406, 405, the top three, it's nice just to be in the top three anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, it makes that much easier, but I was looking at it, and I kept, I was listening to you in the background, too, saying he needs this, he needs this, and I'm saying, yeah, I know already. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we will see you uh, in the spring for the tournament. Congratulations, sir. Thanks very Thank much. Thank you very much. Glad All, right. Be back. All right. That's Tim Lipke, our winner today, and here's the way the ladder shapes up now for the Tournament of Champions. Now, keep in mind, there is still one spot open, and we'll decide that a couple of months down the road after we have our mixed doubles tournament the next four weeks. But right now, as we were just mentioning, Tim Lipke, the number three seed at 405, Bob Kelly and Joe Ashline ahead of him, Rich Clark and Dan Broder, and that one spot still left available. Now, a quick reminder, next weekend, Saturday at noon, we will have candle pin skins from the Londonderry Bowling Center. Sunday at noon, we'll start our annual mixed doubles tournament here on Stars and Strikes as we have five teams, mixed doubles competition, three games. It's always a lot of fun, and we hope you'll join us uh, for that next Sunday here at Park Place Lane. So until next weekend, for Dan Murphy, who will return next weekend, and the whole Winds of New England crew, I'm Doug Brown. Have a great week, everybody.